Hello, Nerdy Librarian here, bringing you another bonus content episode, Gone Fishing. I believe this is number eight. It's it's been a while, been a while since I've uh, recorded one of these because there was a bit of a fiasco with when videos were getting uploaded and there was. So I I recorded a bonus content video called Becoming the Buff Boy. Go back and watch that. I think you'll I think you'll enjoy that one. But we're back on track schedule-wise with recordings and uploads and that sort of thing. So, when last we left Felix Oddball with fishing and the fishing quests, he had made his way over to Markarth, making his way to fish some garbage out of the river there. Actually managing to catch a pair of dwarven boots with a fire resistance enchantment. So that was def definitely something there. While there, he was also given a task of giving private lessons to Linnea, someone who was wanting to learn how to fish. And in accomplishing this, she gave Felix her amulet of Debella, which not only has the increased speech skill that a normal one does, but also gives a boost to endurance. So it's... And as I mentioned in the previous Gone Fishing episode with this, it has its own um, item tag or item name, which means that you can only get it once in game, and this is it. Following this was Spirits Away. This one was working with uh, Reisad, a fellow Khajiit, a Khajiit tradesman who had been transporting some bottles of aged flynn, a, a type of alcohol that uh, is very expensive, and he had accidentally managed to dump in the river by accident. The cart overturned, and bottles went under the water. So, Felix, upon fishing these up, was given an enchanted ring as the reward, um, which is for quicker movement and silence, that sort of thing. Um, following this, yeah, we did, we did a lot during this episode, I'll say that. So with this one, not only were we having to catch certain types of fish, but we were having to prepare them food-wise and for Jizzly at the Winking Skeever. So it required steamed crab legs, cooked arctic char, and a bowl of crab stew. Which actually didn't take very long to um, make and that sort of thing, which was nice. So anyways, that's what we had to do with Jizzly on that one. I actually managed to get that one done in like 10 to 12 minutes, so it wasn't too bad. It was, I thought it was going to take a real long time because it was kind of a laundry list of things, but it didn't, which was nice. And then this one. This quest beneath bronze waters. This was the one I'd been waiting for. The one I'd been working towards. Um, so this involved the waters around bronze water cave and all of the dwarven implements that could be caught there. This quest is also the one where you can catch, or where you are given the dwarven fishing rod by Calselmo. For this one, you had to travel to the often ruined tower to collect the schematic for the Dwarven Fishing Rod, which gives you an increased chance of catching treasure items while fishing, which is what I really wanted, because there are a lot of items on that list that are very interesting, have really good enchantments, and is just worthwhile. So, did that, and Kalsomo indeed gave me the Dwarven Fishing Rod, and immediately I was tasked or Felix was tasked with using that dwarven fishing rod near Bronzewater Cave to catch what are known as Ethereum Dynamo Cores and place them onto two 
pedestals in the middle of the water, causing a third to rise from the center, a chest with a set of very beautiful and deadly dwarven axes, one enchanted with a fire enchantment, the other with a frost enchantment. They are really good, and they're, at, and they're one-handed, which is insane. I'll say that. And then, finally, finally, and this one was, oh boy. This one was such a nightmare. So, Wavebreaker. So, if you remember back to Gone Fishing 3 and Gone Fishing 4, how I was doing a quest that required taking care of a certain frenzied mud crab problem up near Dawnstar in an area just west of there along the shore where everything seemed to want to kill me in game. Well, we made a return to there because the frenzied mud crabs came back with a vengeance. And when I say with a vengeance, I mean it was all out warfare between Felix, some Imperial soldiers on one side, and the frenzied mud crabs with a spectral emperor frenzy or an emperor crab guardian spear, a massive fant phantasmal version of a mud crab that when it slammed its claws into the ground caused massive AoEs, dealing enough damage per hit if you're close enough, like within 30 feet of it, to instantly KO you. So, yeah, and with that there were frenzied mud crabs that had flaming pots they were carrying for whatever reason. I don't know why they had them, but upon battling through this, Felix managed to secure enough of these and launch them from the catapults to take out the Emperor Crab Guardian Spirit. To be honest, good old-fashioned sneak and bow would have worked so much better than this. It was, it was a fiasco, but we got through it. We completed the mission. We completed the quest. We did it. We saved the people of Dawnstar. There was no longer a threat. And earned some gold for our troubles. And now, in this episode... I, I So I alluded to becoming the buff boy. Last time. Or uh, just it, within this introduction and that sort of thing. Going through the quests that we did... And one, something happened during, during that episode, becoming the buff boy. We were approached by one, not one, but two couriers during that. And one of those couriers was bearing a very frenzied note. Um, a, a letter from Viria. So we're going to read that now. Welcome to the end of the line. Potentially the end of the line on these fishing quests. Um, so let's take a look at this. It said Viria's note, so it's probably going to be... Ah, Viria's hastily written letter. Oh, never mind. Nope, that was for the attacking uh, mud crabs. Let's see here. Where is it? Letter from Viria. Felix Oddball. Thank you for everything you've done for the fishery, as well as your heroic deeds on the northern shore. I'm writing to let you know that I can no longer provide you with fishing bounties. Allow me to explain. The others at the fishery have never understood my appreciation of mud crabs, and our recent battle has only increased my respect for these lovely clawed creatures. I've learned so much about how to raise them, all thanks to the juvenile mud crab you brought me not long ago. And so I've decided to leave the fishery to strike out on my own as a crab merchant. There's space for a market stall in the Grand Plaza, but I don't have the materials I need to build it. I'm no smithy either, so I'll have to buy the materials myself. I plan to spend my every waking hour working to save up for it. I'll need a large bundle of wood, nails, iron fittings for the stall doors, 
and a lock to keep my earnings safe. One day I will have my dream of my own market stall, brimming with crab. Swims in deep water will no doubt be repulsed. He's never kept his disdain of a mud crab a secret. Speaking of our fish-loving friend, you can still seek work from him if you are so inclined. Viria. Okay. So here's what this tells me. One. Well, I am definitely going to have to gather some materials for this. Because... This goes right along with home building and that sort of thing, which is simple enough to do. This, however, this is probably going to be the end of the line, so to speak, when it comes to these Gone Fish and Bonus content episodes. And the reason I say that is because this is the final actual quest in this line, which is... I mean, kind of cool, kind of sad at the same time. Although, I'm not, I mean, I work with my mother. it's always nice to so move on to more in different content. But, good pieces out you know, it's always a little more bittersweet inside. when when you finish up a... How, how do I even describe it? Some type of... Um, oh, I'm, I'm doing such a terrible job of explaining this, aren't I? When, when you come to the end of a, a series, even if it's a mini-series on these sorts of things. Don't forget to check inside. So, okay. Well, getting back on topic here. Just made most of what was needed, but... We've got some. I'm the I'm quickly going through our... their inventories here because there's something that I want. Karundum. Um, I believe I need one of this, and then one of these. Good doing business with you. I I could have tried to go out into the wild and mine it, but this is honestly a much easier you. way of doing it. It saves a lot of hassle. Yeah, so let's uh, take a look at what's needed here. Yep. Oh, we need four iron fittings. You think Excuse me. Well. Father provides oh. The is his alone? Well, they're just huh. locked up for let's the day. Say I advise. Pe Eighteen pieces of firewood. Ooh, that's gonna be ninety carry weight. Um, <laughs> ouch. Also, uh, it's a bit unexpected, but the um, owner and proprietor of War Maidens seems to have um, vacated claim to be the best their boats. They the have locked up the shop for some reason. Which means that Adrian Avenici now carries the same inventory that he did as well. Okay, just out of curiosity, anything good in here? I know I've checked this. I think I've checked this before, just... That might be worthwhile. That might be worth getting. 14 armor class on boots raises the armor rating by one, so not a huge amount. The carrying capacity might be better on that. Maybe. The price, not the greatest. However, um, nope, never m Well, there's a skilled helmet of major alchemy that I can sell here, because I already have a steel plate helmet of that. And that'll free up two carry weight, which will be nice. Um, also, why am I carrying two shields on me? That's right. I think I I think I intended to sell that as well. Don't forget. So, okay, I have seventy carry weight left. To check inside the shop if you need anything. Yeah, this isn't gonna be great. <sighs> 
carry weight wise. So we have the fittings we're going to need. Um, and that's going to be at the Riften Fishery. So the only thing I can think to do here to mitigate the disaster that could happen by trying to chop wood in Whiterun only to find out that I don't have enough carry weight to get me to rift in, I'm going to chop wood here instead and just and be here for this. Good news is there is a wood chopping block close by. Well, now we just get to sit around and watch Felix, uh, Felix, Felix chop some logs. Why'd I call him Felix? I, I was probably... You ever have those times where you actually combine two words together? Like, you're trying to say one that you previously thought of, but then you think of another word. Like, the next thing that you're going to say, and you just combine them together. I do that all the time. Not sure how many times I've done that during these playthrough episodes. Out with it. Oh, good. And there's there's Viria right there. Tidings. Which is good. Although, uh, our friend Felix here is about to be. Well, he he's gonna be moving at the speed of NPC. Put it that way. <laughs> Which isn't fast at all. <laughs> there, There is slow, and then there is NPC. It's what I call, it's, it's the Skyrim Fat Walk. The Skyrim Fat Walk, which I know I've discussed previously, is you f end up moving at the same speed as the walking speed of an NPC. But you, you are about to see that right now. Oh, nope, that's the sneak button. I always do that. No. See? That's fine scale armor you've got there, shiny. See, we, we just have to walk around like this now. Uh, good news is Viria's right around the corner, it looks like. Makes my job a lot easier. Oh, no, she's going in. That'd be in the barb. Oh, wait up, please. I I have the things you need, Veria. Don't, don't, don't go in there yet. No, please don't. Ah. Ow. Uh, no, please don't. Don't do it, Veria. Yeah. Yeah. You jerk. Well, regardless of that, we're, we're here. So let's just follow her over here and... Give her what she needs. Oh, she's going all the way, isn't she? She's making this really difficult on us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Viria. Excuse me. I'm waiting. Uh, uh, I, I'm going to ask her this first. Know of anyone in need of fishy work around Skyrim? Nah, I don't think so. Yeah, just thought I'd ask. I'll check with the uh, swims in deep water. Good luck out there. I I just wanted to be sure on that. Here's everything you'll need to build a store in the plaza. By the gods, I don't even know what to say. I'll stop by the plaza tomorrow once you've gotten everything set up. Thanks. I'll see you there. Okay. Now we just have to wait 24 hours for her to set that up. Time to go loiter somewhere. <laughs> loiter is such a fun word. They say Ulfric Stormcloak murdered the High King. Hatch the lurk in a corner. Oh, other button. So it's yeah, 24 hours. Here we go. Watch an entire day pass before us, as we do absolutely nothing. All, all for completing the quest. Well... Well... 
Come we waited. See me in the market if you're looking for the finest custom jewelry in all of Skyrim. Ah. Out with it. Looks like you're all set up here, yeah. It would seem so. I wanted to give you this, a token of my appreciation. Good luck, Viria. I hope everything works out with your new venture. Thanks. Good luck out there. That was it? Okay. Viri's charm. Let's take a look at this. Can swim underwater without drowning. Increases light armor skill by 22 points. And increases the heavy armor skill by 22 points. Ooh, that's, that's an interesting little thing. Huh. And of course, it has a mud crab on it. <sighs> yeah. Okay. All right. Well, now what? Well, I guess there's only one thing left to do here. Because... Otherwise, this is going to be a really short Gone Fishing episode. Or a really short... This is going to be a really short video. Otherwise. Because, I mean, up... I mean, it didn't take us very long, so... About half of this video has been the introduction, to be honest. Or... Yes? Going over what... Please help me. Going over what, we are, what we've completed last episode... I'm just stumbling over my words. It's... It happens. But let's talk to Swims in Deep Water. Well met. Who is not him? I anyone at the moment. So if you're looking for work, you're out of luck. Ah, Vandor. Trees. They're beautiful here. I don't care Reminds me of about your talk home. of trees. I like trees. Yes. Ah, there you are. Need something? Are there any more fishing challenges you can give me? You've already learned all I can teach you. I'm looking for work. I understand. It's all in this note. Okay, good. All right, then. Bounty, clear cleaning our waterways. We have another one of those. What city are we going to this time? What city of lazy people who just chuck their trash into the water are we dealing with? Is it this one? Mark Hearth again. Bounty, cleaning our waterways, by order of Jarl Eggman, some have taken to using the water that runs through Mark Hearth as a place to dispose of empty bottles, warm boots, and other unwanted things. Not only this, not only is this unsightly, it poses a danger to our citizens. Sadly, we do not have the men to spare to clean up this mess. Any who can fish up at least five pieces of trash from Mark Hearth's waters shall be rewarded. Help us keep our city safe and clean for everyone. Well, alright then. Uh, so, what what this tells me is that these quests probably are on repeat or something like that. As in, a lot of these... A lot of these ones can end up being miscellaneous ones. Or, like, once you've completed them all... They work in the same way that Radiant Quests do, put it that way. Obviously, we're going to use the Dwarven Fishing Rod for this, because it greatly improves the chance of catching items when fishing. So, enchanted items falling in this category. And, technically, if... Well, let me just look back through here, because Rubbish Retrieval, that was... Hmm... Anything dealing with a bounty might be... That isn't fishing challenges might be something that can be... Doubled up on. I'm not... Positive on that, and there are a lot of... There'd be a lot of quests to filter through there to figure that out. But, in lieu of that, we're just gonna start fishing and trying to catch items. Trying to catch enchanted items. Although, well, let, let me think about this. I'm, 
I'm trying to think if in Mark Hearth if there are only two enchanted items that you can fish up here, being the boots that I mentioned uh, in in the synopsis. Ooh, a pogfish, poggers. <laughs> Granted, I'm a YouTuber. I am not. I I don't use Twitch, at least not yet. So I probably can't really make that joke then, can can I? Because that that's kind of a Twitch thing. Well, we have to wait until this place runs out of fish, obviously. That, that's the way this sort of thing works. There we go, that's an item there. A Dweamer Cup makes a lot of sense, given where we're at. See what other types of dwarven junk we can find here. Oh, that's gonna be a fish, isn't it? Yeah, it's a fish. Another pog fish. The good news is, these fish that I do end up catching can be used for alchemy, which is definitely a good thing because I mean, since this is the first time that I've ever gone through this, uh, these fishing quests and that sort of thing. I mean, it is for a lot of people because of when Anna, of how recent Anniversary Edition has been. But granted, I don't have the full-fledged Anniversary Edition. I know it adds a whole lot of other content to the game, but I mean, there were there were some things that were added to Skyrim regardless of that fact, and you know, fishing was one of them. And I, I'd, I'd always wanted fishing to be in Skyrim in some capacity. I'm I'm not sure I necessarily like the just Oh! Oh! See, this this is why I'm using the dwarven the dwarven rod. It's for moments like this. Ring of health increases your health by 30 points. So you can you can pull up just random enchanted items. So you could get something pretty decent, or you could get something really good with that. And there are some that are even rarer enchantment-wise. And then in a place like Markarth, where there's a lot of Dweamer influence and Dwe Dweamer ruins, you, you end up pulling up a lot of scrap metal and that sort of thing, which can be broken down into Dwarven ingots, and if your smithing skill is high enough and you're able to work with Dwarven armor and weapons and that sort of thing, it can be really useful. Which now we can also collect the bounty from Rare, which is excellent. Yep, so six Dwarven ingots from those two things and three from that. I'd say we're in good shape on that. Um, granted, we used up all the firewood that we had when working with Viria. I mean, I can always chop some more here. I'm not exactly sure where the wood chopping block is, but we can craft some uh, dwarven arrows, which are definitely better than steel arrows. It can increase our smithing skill a little bit, and, well, yeah, I, I think so. Because I... What I truly want to be able to do is get up to glass armor. It doesn't matter if they're in the city. We Good to see Skyrim. And clean the water and mark our Thank you. Here, this is for you. 325 gold. I have it's not a lot, but it's definitely something. So let's go make those. Let's go find a wood chopping block. Make some dwarven arrows. And then we'll make our way. Making our way? back down to Riften, where we can get another fishing-related quest, and probably cap off this episode. Potentially. This one will... This one, I think, will probably be... or will definitely be a shorter one. And, I mean, for good reason. We've... Seriously? Uh, it's, that's not a wood chopping block, that's why. 
but we've basically gotten to the end of the fishing content. So, I mean, so part of that is we can we can celebrate a little bit. Yeah, we did it. You know, we we got to the end of it. We got through all the quests and that sort of thing. Let me guess. You need but to now, guess. but now it becomes a question of what do I do for um for bonus content videos? Uh, hey, feel free to uh, put no some comments. Put some comments on this video or other videos. You know, saying what you would like to see me do bonus content wise, or just quest wise and that sort of thing. And while you're at it, feel free to hit the like button, subscribe, you know, those sorts of things. Helps out. Helps my channel out and that sort of thing. Wouldn't be opposed to that. And I want to make sure that I'm, you know, doing content that you guys enjoy. So, you know, having your input really helps with that sort of thing. Speaking of uh, content and that sort of thing, I have, I've never tried to chop wood in Markarth. That's such a weird sentence to say. I'd be a lot warmer. Like I did not think I was going to say that string of words all in that, all in a row, about this place. No, but seriously, I have never. I don't think I've ever tried to chop wood in Markarth. Where is the wood chopping block? It it has to be somewhere that's really obvious, right? Right? I mean. Fancy yourself an alchemist. It, it would make sense if it was obvious. But that that'd be too easy. So I'm look I'm looking for a place where wood is piled up. You know people probably know this better than I do. So I'm gonna but I'm gonna spend the time struggling to find that because you guys can laugh at my ineptitude at finding a wood chopping block in game. That is seriously unfortunate for me. But you know what? I think that's good. I think that's funny. Because I've played this game for countless hours. Like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours. It's fine scale armor you and I can't find a simple wood chopping block. So much so that I'm going to have to look this up. Uh, let's see here. I see I'm not the only one who's looked this up. Oh. Okay. Well. <laughs> oh man, that's stupid. <laughs> There's no wood chopping black in my car. I think I realized that, but part of me was like, I really think I can find this. I can do it. Nope. I Nope. There there wasn't any doing that. <laughs> it doesn't exist in my card. Good to know. Just so I don't make that same mistake in the future, and if I do, feel free to laugh at me. Gosh dang it, Skyrim. You amaze me every single time. Like, this is one of those games where just when you think you've explored everything in it and you know everything about it, it shows you something new to throw a curveball. There's always something more to discover. Anytime I play a Bethesda game, to be honest. Anytime I play one of their games. Whether it's the Elder Scrolls series or the Fallout series. I'm always stumbling across new locations in a and encounters. It never ceases to amaze. Like, thank you for creating games that have so much content that like, that new things can always be found. Like, there Yeah. Whew, boy. So like I said, let's create let's create those uh, dwarven arrows here. Twenty-four dwarven arrows for each one of these. Oh, controller conked out. Good timing for that. 
let the chaos ensue. So we gained pretty much an entire level of smithing on that for those dwarven arrows. And now, dwarven arrow wise, we are sitting at 266, and each of these do 14 damage, versus the 12 dam or the 10 damage that steel arrows do. I said 12 damage, and I think I had elven arrows on them on the brain. And the reason I say that is because, or no, elven arrows do 16. Is it orcish arrows that do 12 damage? Uh -huh. Okay, it's orcish arrows that do 12 damage. The thing I always find with things like orcish arrows or with elven arrows is that I never have enough materials to be able to make those. Or to be able to make them in bulk. There are just so many of them. So, we are back here in Riften to Please talk to the ones in deep water. You know, because, I mean, this is a bonus content gone fishing episode. Well, probably the last bonus content gone fishing episode due to the fact that we are out of main quest line for fishing. I, th I think we're out of main quest line for that. Well, it says... No, it only says one quest line has com been completed. We did... Com Unless it counts it as its own... No, it doesn't. Um... Well... You know what? I don't know the answer to that. I honestly don't. And... So maybe somebody who knows more about that than I do will be like, "Oh, yeah, no, you've already finished the." Well met. I don't think they're hiring quest line, but so if you're looking for work, you're out of luck. But yeah, so now we basically have just a fish museum and a whole bunch of aquariums. Each of these aquariums has the different collections of fish that we had to catch. So that's. Salmon that can be harvested there. Trees. They're beautiful here. Reminds now, me for whatever reason, water. swims in deep water is not in here at the moment, which is. Read fish out of water. Oh, we've already read that. Uh, ledger. Uh, we've we've read this. Things to do. Yeah, not not much going on with that. We'll we'll find him eventually. All right. So since it swims in deep water is not, well, oh, he is. Here. Where where did you come from? Swims in deep water. So he's not gonna have any more fishing challenges. Let me check. Yeah, he's he's gonna say that. I don't know why it lit that up. So, you know what? To finish off this this mini series and the bonus content category on gone fishing with the fishing quests let's finish it off with the fishing quest i'm looking for work i understand it's all in this note <laughs> all right then it's gonna be mark Hearth again isn't it the slobs well i mean uh Let's see, is it this one? Nope. Is it this one? Nope. Then it must be this one. Bounty. Cleaning our waterways. By order of Jarl Igman. Some have taken to using the water that runs through Markarth as a place to dispose of empty bottles, worn boots, and other unwanted things. Not only is this unsightly, it poses a danger to our citizens. Sadly, we do not have the men to spare to clean up this mess. Any who can fish up at least four pieces of trash from Markarth's water shall be rewarded. Help us keep our city safe and clean for everyone. Huh. Well, that's the third time I've been called in to help clean up the mess of your citizens, Yarligman, because they are too... They're so lazy that they are dumping their trash items into the waterways of Mark Hearth. 
you know it's bad when when the last thing I had access to, or had as my equipped weapon, so to speak, is my dwarven rod. You know it's bad when that's what's happening. Uh, looks like this first one's gonna be a fish here. No. Oh, we lost the catch though. It did that four nibble thing, which meant it was going to be a rare fish. That would have been nice. Oh well. So of course we're going to start off by catching a few fish here and that sort of thing before we can actually get to the good bit and maybe we can pull up some enchanted stuff. That would be a great way to cap off this Gone Fishing series, I think. I mean, I don't know about you, but I enjoyed this one, but I'm also ready for this little series to be finished. And the reason I say that is because, I mean, I will be the first to admit that the fishing in Skyrim is not the most exciting thing. I'll say that. However, as a caveat, it's kind of like fishing in Minecraft. I mean, if you're able to pull up enchanted items, it makes it more worthwhile. Like that. Oh. What? I heard the little oh, with it too. All spells cost 10 less magic at a cast. Now, obviously, I'm not going to be able to disenchant that, I'm guessing. But it's nice to be able to pull up a rare ring like that out of the waterways. 10% less magic at a cast isn't a bad enchantment for a ring like that. Ah, a salmon. Excellent. Something that I can't do anything with. So here's the thing. If I catch more Dweemer scrap items, I can turn those into ingots and make dwarven arrows, I believe. But I keep pulling up boots and, and, that, and the mentor's ring, which That'll go nicely with the vampiric ring that I found. Sadly, in this game, you can only have one ring equipped at a time. Unlike the former game, Oblivion, where you could... Where you could have two rings equipped. So, yeah. Yeah, and obviously... The only items we pulled up on this are ones that we just have to straight up sell. Which actually, now that I think about it, if we're going to sell those, we're going to do this the proper way. We're going to do this the right way. We're going to be smart about this. Prices are 10% better, Amulet of Zenithar, and then do I have any potions of barter? I. You know, I don't know if I do. Let me just take a quick look here. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. That is the gist of what I said. Blah, blah, blah. Alright, uh, enchanted items on that. Stamina. Yeah, no, nothing. Need a new blade? You got the set. The finest weapons and arms. Okay. Well, thirty-eight gold for each of those, and the dwarven battle axe, hundred thirty-four gold for that. Okay. Does she have anything fun, aside from what I just sold her? Not... Ah... Uh, nope, nope. Nope, 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 nope. Nope, she does not. What about training You've and smithing? Learned I've already learned everything that she can teach me. Great. So let's go finish this quest up. And then we can 
bring this little mini series to a close. Doesn't matter if they're in the city. Uh, excuse me, right, right. Good to see Skyrim still has such fine people. You give an old man hope. I've cleaned up the water around Markarth. Thank you. Here, this is for you. Another 325 gold from this for cleaning up Markarth's garbage. Well, on that note, you know, I'm going to go ahead and cap off the series. This bonus content gone fishing series, that is. You can. I'll continue to make. Skyrim Legendary playthrough videos in Skyrim because, well, as you can see, there is a whole lot more to do in Skyrim. There's a whole lot more to explore, to discover. We have DLCs to get into aside from Hearthfire. It's going to be a fun time, and that's going to be a lot of videos. So stick in there, keep watching them. Thank you for thank you for your support on this. You know, if you like what you've seen and you want to see me make more Skyrim Legendary playthrough videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. And if you have any ideas of what I ought to do for little, short bonus content, bonus content videos on things that you can do in Skyrim, or just anything in general like that, feel free. I'm the Nerdy Librarian. Just want to say thank you once again to all of you for watching this, enjoying this. You know, and helping this to be possible. Couldn't do it without you guys. And so with that, I'm going to go ahead and end this one right here. Thank you for watching.